10 things you missed in Genshin Impact's 2.5 trailer. I really like doing these types of videos but since we only have 11 days away from releasing, I'm gonna make this a speedrun instead of an actual discussion. So be sure to listen cause I squeezed them all up into one tight ball to fit into how many minutes this video is. Now on with the video. Starting off strong with this godly thing, it seems like Raiden Shogun has been acting up in the trailer. To me, this feels like the Raiden puppet is trying to take control of what's supposed to be a path to eternity. The face-off between the two different Raidens here is a big giveaway that something is up between A and the puppet that she created. What with the previous thunderstorms that the Raiden puppet is causing after being stripped of some of its functions, as well as the Raiden puppet calling A the word she, which points out that A's new path to eternity is conflicting with the Raiden puppet's functions to pursue her own way of eternity. We can also see that two Raidens are holding different weapons. A is known for using a polearm, which if you can still remember this previous cinematic of A being the shadow of Makoto and uses a polearm instead of a sword like her sister does. At number 2, the branches of the Dainichi Mikoshi can be closely resembled with the branches of the ermen cell trees we see in Domains. Whether or not the Dainichi Mikoshi was blessed by Isaroth, the god of time, when she helped Aberaku construct it, we don't know yet. But to me, this looks a lot like a countermeasure of the tower placed by either Aberaku or Isaroth herself to fend off against anyone who dares to mess with the Dainichi Mikoshi. We can also only speculate Isaroth's relation with the Ermen Soul Trees because of the previous parable of the tree being connected to the god of time herself allowing the branches of the spirit tree to be replanted by the gardener. Whether or not the tower of the Dainichi Mikoshi is also a branch of the spirit tree, we don't know yet. At number 3, the symbols affecting the Dainichi Mikoshi are made by the Abyss Order. One of the symbols that you see in the trailer are the same symbols in the Spiral Abyss, specifically with this hourglass looking thing. With the only difference of these symbols and the Spiral Abysses one is that these symbols here are purple which could mean that they are made with a different purpose or is crudely constructed compared to the Spiral Abyss's symbols. But this one in particular seems to be used to take control over the Dainichi Mikoshi. Different colored symbols like these are seen in many domains and creations of the Abyss back then. And this one is no different from the spells used by the Abyss Order. Talent domains, artifact domains, and weapon upgrade domains also have these same symbols. We do see a lot of these purple ones on the Abyss Order itself instead of the blue ones, and it's very apparent on the previous Dane's Leaf quest on this upside down statue of the Seven with the purple aura and stuff. A crude, corrupted version of the real magic of the Abyss, perhaps. So maybe the Abyss Order isn't really what they seem. At number 4, the Kamen Rider Squad, Bing Chilling, in front of the Dainichi Mikoshi are what's called the Shadowy Husks, as mentioned by our lovely voice actors in the 2.5 livestream. Interestingly, they do not mention the flag bearer, which is this guy, having a symbol of what looks like a sun on its banner, which if you activate the Dainichi Mikoshi into its light mode and go away, you can see this sort of pattern. Rotate that sideways and you get the flag bearer symbol of what looks like the sun. The shadowy husks in the trailer don't look like they're guarding the Dainichi Mikoshi from outsiders either. So my only guess is that these husks are the soldiers of Enkanamiya known as Jibashiri. They were mentioned back in the book Before the Sun and Moon and we also see four of them in the game as well. Three on each locust challenge if you can still remember them, these ghosties right here, and one named Anti who fought a ruin guard and not even realizing that he died. Their attacks look dead but they bear the standard of their kingdom, and even the attacks of the husks seem to be more deliberate and rehearsed for battle rather than a bunch of mindless zombies swinging their weapons. Next is this new shrine maiden who is apparently inside of Enkanomiya. Judging from her hairstyle, it doesn't strike any similarity to the shrine maidens in Watatsumi. But do tell me if I'm wrong because I only remember these four shrine maidens. For now, I assume that she is either Eboshi or Eboshi, which is the ancestor of Tsuyuko, who, if you remember, was the person that commissioned us to go to Enkanomiya in the first place. Or this could be Aru, which is not me, 
Mm, but the shade in charge of the ritual to retrieve the corals from the baptismal bishops, if you can still remember. Or maybe it's a new shrine maiden employee that was appointed by Kokomi herself. At number 6, the person speaking here in this scene is the pyrolector imposter that we meet who helped us named Enjo. And we get to chat with him in a more casual manner without him shouting his random chants at us. This time he seems more curious as to why we join forces with quote unquote them, which probably points to the people of Watatsumi, or in more urgent terms, joining forces with Celestia. At number 7, the people speaking here I can only guess is either A or Sara. And Kanomiya is exceedingly dangerous right now. I was hoping I have the chance. But after thinking of that, I don't think they know of the situation in Enkanamiya completely. However, the people of Narukami knowing the situation could be a given because of what's been going on in the trailer. And as for the male voice, maybe it's Abaraku trying for a chance to fix the tower? Or maybe it's a new shade that knows how to stop the Abyss Order? Or maybe one of the shadowy husks that still have some bit of soul left inside them? For this one, I'm gonna leave it to the actual release for us to find out. Next, the three glowing things that are linked to the Dainichi Mikoshi comes from the three locuses that we activated before. So it seems that we'll need to activate some sort of failsafe or emergency switch to control the Dainichi Mikoshi again. Or at least, keep it from being corrupted by the Abyss Order. At number 9, the Dainichi Mikoshi hearing wishes and the big hole that it tears up being the same location as the Grand Narokami Shrine's tree makes it even more interesting because it could be related to the quest about Yaimiko or about Raiden or maybe an entirely new Archon quest. As for the Hakushin, it's basically the Fox Priestess of Narokami back then. The Kitsune Saigu was also a descendant of the Hakushin. It's safe to say that Yaimiko is gonna use some of that Hakushin power as well to stop that tear in the sky from getting bigger. Or generally just do something about that gaping hole on top of a sacred shrine of Inazuma. Lastly, at number 10, this new villain in possibly Yai's character quest seems to have power to make portals, and probably by using mirrors. Personally, I hope it has something to do with Arlecchino, which is the replacement for Senora, but Mihoyo only shows Harbingers in trailers if they are actually in the new story quests. If I can remember correctly, this is the first trailer where we see mirrors and reflections of other characters. Maybe this new villain can do something with the reflections of certain people. Or this character quest is just an epilogue or a resolution story about the reflections of the self. Which all comes back to number 1 where A and Raiden Puppet are in this weird conflict. Safe to say that when the Raiden Puppet was having this type of issue, Yai Miko probably already knows about it. Which is why she asked us, the Traveler, and be the one to defeat this godly Archon mode with hands. Mihoyo, please make this a playable character. So those are the 10 things you missed in Genshin Impact's 2.5 trailer. All in all, this trailer is filled with new secrets and new things to find out, especially about Inazuma, as well as its newfound relation to Enkanamiya, now that we've seen the trailer. But before I end this video, I want to thank the guys over at Honey Hunters Discord for helping me out with some of my theories and lore videos. This one specifically, I just made after watching the trailer for about 100 times. But in the next theory slash lore videos, when they come out, we'll surely have their takes on it too. As always, leave a like if you enjoyed the video, comment down below what you think of the 2.5 trailer. And if you want to see more of my videos, make sure to subscribe and click on that bell icon, that one over there. That way you'll know whenever I have a new video posted. So with all that said, I'll see you guys in the next video, yeah? Bye!